Now tuning in to Earbud Media, audio for everyone. Is that like how we test for audio now? Great vines. Yeah. <laughs> great vines, yeah. And good. And I think we're good. Instead of just clapping, we'll just say great vines over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we're good now. Great. Cody, I I have a dilemma and I need to ask your advice for it. Yeah, of course. Great. So when this comes out, this will be completely irrelevant and I'll just update you all on this. But I have to ask your personal help for this because it's tomorrow when we're talking about this um so tomorrow will be friday spoiler alert we record these early it's a shocker to fucking nobody um what (laughs) so tomorrow is friday and it is spirit day at my middle school and every spirit day we have a theme and the theme tomorrow is fandom day so there have been posters from all of our asb students giving students suggestions for what kind of fandoms they could join and wear to show their support And so they've done all of our announcements and they could be like, you could wear things like the Seattle Seahawks or Harry Potter, things like this to show your support. But there is a poster that's right outside my classroom of some examples of things that you could have um, and show your support for. And I wanted to get your feedback on if I should use some of these as inspiration or show my own fandom tomorrow. The first one that is on this poster is Taylor Swift. Okay. And it's T A L O R Swift. Okay. So so just think about that, let that ruminate. The other one is Jake Paul. And so I wasn't sure where I should go on this. Yeah, sure. And you're kind of you're hip with the the teens and the youth. And so what what should I do, Cody? Um you know Teens, they love a lot of things, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> what if? <laughs> Go. No. Finish the bit. No. Nope. What if you were a pair of Heelys? <laughs> now, tell me how I how I would do this the bit that you are <laughs> saying out loud <laughs> right now. I do. I must. I explain. <laughs> I, just just so that it's explicitly clear not to me but to <laughs> the, the people to the people that are listening right now uh-huh. uh-huh um well teens love Heelys. yeah they just love like really dangerously going through hallways one could argue that they are the Heelys of the society I, which which transitions beautifully into my costume idea for you. <laughs> sure. Yeah. A, you gotta be wearing a pair of peelies. Just for the bit. Sure. I, uh, yeah. I definitely own <laughs> those already. Yeah, listen. I'm sure you can get them in the next 12 hours. I believe in you. There's definitely a 24-hour store that definitely sells Heelys. Yeah, listen. Yep. Okay. I need you to stop shutting down my ideas. No, no, I'm definitely, <laughs> no, I'm writing these down right now. Can you, I'm, yeah. I just. I think I, I may have like... just fucked up on us. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. Okay, bye. I feel like Heelys. you're not taking my ideas. No, seriously. I'm, <laughs> Cody, hey, you are safe in this space. <laughs> okay, it number one. It doesn't feel safe. <laughs> number, one. <laughs> number one, buy Heelys. Number two is, Go. <laughs> An excellent question. Um, maybe like, maybe <laughs> like, a, the get heel. like, r- sure, yeah, maybe like get like a like a box, like a cardboard box, and like either mm. carve out like the shape of like 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 just like like big shoes with like wheels on them. <laughs> so, like, you, like you wear it like as like a box or whatever. Okay. And it's but it looks like Heelys. Um, <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> Now, pause. I want yeah. you to imagine for just a moment. 
<laughs> that you walk in uh-huh. as a as a student on a Friday. You're tired. Yep. You just want your day to end, and yep. your fucking teacher <laughs> is wearing a box <laughs> and a helmet because hi, yeah. I'm wearing safety. <laughs> safety first in life and in love <laughs> on those wheels first. you got <laughs> in life and love always wear heelys <laughs> well hi in life and love wear a helmet but also wear heelys um <laughs> and so i'm wearing your teacher is wearing a box <laughs> and a yeah. helmet and yeah. heelys and yeah. okay well, the box is carved so it looks like it's not like a full ass box. Like you, you just cut out like the shape of a shoe on either side, of <laughs> so it looks like pairs of Heelys. How is this not? How is this hard to follow? So your teacher has become a human <laughs> shoe. Yes. <laughs> so I am the old lady who lives in a shoe sure. with a helmet and Heelys. So I am the yes. traveling woman who lives yes. inside of a shoe. <laughs> yes. Okay. That sounds like a fucking nightmare. I but would I also support like to just idea. I would just no, I would just like to rebuke here for a moment. Please, please. That your favorite Halloween costume you've ever done was a goddamn whoopee cushion and you All post right. that photo like seventeen <laughs> times a year. <laughs> you are at no place to judge. Alright, you're right. I've seen it that photo of you in a whoopee cushion more than I've probably seen like normal photos of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You always post that photo. That's true. At any chance you get, you're like, oh, it's my dad's birthday. Here's me <laughs> in a whoopee cushion costume. Happy Halloween. It's me in a whoopee cushion costume. Happy Valentine's Day. It's me in a whoopee cushion You're not wrong. I'm not. All right. <laughs> All right. I mean, if nothing else, you can be one of just the hot teen beauty vloggers that just say the n-word if that's if that's a better option (laughs) legitimately cody i was thinking about going as a famous youtuber tomorrow oh god what were you think which one well i have all my vidcon badges and i was thinking about going as like you know i was oh i was thinking about going as like a famous youtuber um and just like carrying like a selfie stick and having all the like my press badges like don't talk to me i think that would be fun that would be fun Yeah, or I was thinking about leaning into the bit and, like, messing up my makeup and being like, oh, I got some right at TanaCon, but I thought that might be too niche. (laughs) And it's also a little late. (laughs) (laughs) People are going to be like, are you good? Are you okay? (laughs) Yeah, so I thought I might just be a famous YouTuber and not be, like, Jake Paul. (laughs) Yeah, So a famous YouTuber that is not Jake Paul. Exactly. And yeah, Um, fine. But that might also require me to get a hoverboard cool YouTuber <laughs> in the next. Yeah, box. exactly. You gotta, you have to have some form of like dangerous transportation that's definitely banned at <laughs> schools. <laughs> um, what if I just become Chris Angel in the next twelve hours, like just for like figure out how to levitate, <laughs> just like legitimately think, scare my children? Do you literally think any of your middle schoolers even know who Chris Angel is? Oh damn it! They were born like three years ago. Like what? <laughs> There's no That's way. True. They don't know the gospel. All right. You know what? Fuck my lesson plans tomorrow. We're watching Chris Angel in <laughs> class. <laughs> All right. I'm mind freaking this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm freaking their beans tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. They're not, they don't even, they're not even ready for what's coming for them. My fandom tomorrow is Chris Angel. Fuck everything. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to Into the Twilight. We're Chris Angel fans in this space. <laughs> we stand Chris Angel. I'll fucking say it. I'm not a coward. I fucking love Chris Angel. Are you kidding me? I mean, he's yeah. Tr- like, yeah. I mean, I magic scares me a little bit, but I, I like it. Like, it's all real. Is the problem, and so it scares me. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, hi. How the fuck are you doing, Cody? I'm so tired. Cody was a legitimate journalist today, so I. And by legitimate journalist, I was like making sure people went to the bathroom and didn't get locked in for like three hours that is legitimate work first of all because i do that every day of my whole life and i get paid to be a teacher (laughs) so (laughs) i'm educated (laughs) um and that's making sure that students don't eat my fidgets so like uh (laughs) it's legitimate work is all i'm trying to say listen i'll say one thing i was working with illinois political 
thing that was happening. Whatever. And there's a lot of things about Illinois politics. Most of them are not great. I will say, though, that it's comparable to, like, every trashy reality show. Great. Basically. Like, it felt it felt like an episode of Real Housewives. Like, I thought someone was just gonna, like, get, like, a glass bottle and, like, smash it over someone's head in the middle of, like, a live televised event. <laughs> that's... That's so fucking cool. I love We politics. got some rowdy boys up here, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I love politics. We got some we got some rowdy billionaires, I'll say that. <laughs> Goddamn. Yep. That's wild. As far as me, thank you for asking. Yeah. Um How are you doing? I am I'm sorry. There's a lag. You de- I definitely said it before you said it. <laughs> All right, first of all. Um <laughs> I I am quite nervous about tomorrow's spirit day because do I have spirit? Yes, I do. Do I have spirit? How about you? <laughs> you are everyone I hated in school. I know. I know that. I get told that <laughs> every single day by everyone I'm currently friends with. Um, <laughs> I am reminded of that often. I was that bitch, and I still am that bitch. It's okay. I am exhausted, and I have a heating pad on. So, thank you for asking. Wow, that's great. Yeah, so, I mean, take that with what you will. I'm very excited for the weekend, though. Also, current update, just because I don't know where else to put this in life. Um, <laughs> I'm currently in the process of trying to figure out how to get an ESA. And okay. I took a online questionnaire um, to fill out how to get an ESA. And I was like, I mean, I have medical health issues and Aww. so this should be all right and then I filled out every question on there and I was like uh, I might need to like you know I might need to like fudge these a little bit right because I'm not seeing my current therapist right now um sure. and then all of them were legitimately like oh am I having problems sleeping yup um <laughs> am I having problems eating oh uh, yup uh, and it was just like, I've never felt so called out in my whole goddamn life. And I was like, oh, yikes, my yikes. So, cool. but yeah, so I've gotten cleared for an ESA. So your girl might be getting some cats soon. Look at that. So uh, I will, I will say, I didn't know what that meant when you said it. So oh. I tried to be sly and looked it up. And I, I, I played myself even more because the first result is the European Space Agency. Yeah. So I am <laughs> trying to go to space. Yeah, is what I, I was mean, trying. that makes sense. I get it. Yeah, that checks out. Yeah, thank you for asking about that. I use acronyms. Thank you for reminding me about that. Yeah, yeah so ESAs, yeah. emotional support animal. Um, Got it. Tried to do a questionnaire for it because I am in the middle of switching to my current insurance, which is not rollover until ten one. What's up? Um, Oof. Yep, so fingers crossed, don't die next two weeks. Yeah, let's Holler everyone at you, girl. please prayers. Um keep bowing yeah. in your prayers. So in order to make that happen, I'm waiting on that. So but I've gotten cleared for it and I'm just in the process of trying to get all that figured out. So your girl yeah. might have cats soon. We'll figure it out. Oh uh, it's just wow. in the process. So but yeah. So good news about that and stuff. Wow. Yeah. So, we have actual relevant current events. The yeah. first one, <laughs> Cody and I had to immediately start recording because we were laughing so hard about it. <laughs> so, we need to talk about it. Not actually for the content of the article, but specifically for the photo itself. Uh-huh. <laughs> Would you like to take the lead on this, Cody? Yeah, so, I don't even know what this article is. Me but either. There's a photo. Catherine Hardwick who directed, quote-unquote, the first Twilight? Yeah, I mean, whatever. What she, Whatever. She was involved. Did, like, a Q&A about 10 years since Twilight. Whatever. What's important is that there is a very cursed image <laughs> at the header. <laughs> and it's, and it's like, so Robert Pattinson's body. Like, he looks like a slinky. But oh, my also... God. <laughs> Like, he just, he looks lost and confused. He's doing a weird thing with his arms. His clothes are very baggy, yet also very form-fitting. He looks like he's ready to fucking blast off into space. He (laughs) He looks looks like he's just gonna do a big jump. (laughs) He looks coiled and ready to spring. Yeah. And it's the best thing I've ever seen. So this is a Pop Sugar article. Um, It's Ah. called Catherine Hardwick Talks About Twilight's Legacy and the Importance of Female Directors. So it's very good. 
I would recommend looking at it, read it, let us know how it is, but mainly yeah. because of this photo. Yes. And it's so fucking choice. It's pretty choice. Oh my god. Um, it's it's hard to visually, or it's hard to audibly describe, because this is not a visual medium, <laughs> but uh-huh. please do us a favor, please look at it, because my god, it is the best thing that I've ever seen in my whole life, and I need it forever and always. Yeah. How did we, how did I find this man attractive, is my main question. How? It's honestly, it's so perplexing. Like, this man looks like he has been living in the woods <laughs> for 400 years. Yeah. And he, he just, uh, like, stumbled into an American apparel and was and like, all right, let's fight. <laughs> he looks right now like he is barely holding it together. <laughs> yeah, he's on the last straw. <laughs> yeah, what did I tell you? He looks like it's cursed. He looks like after he took this, um, or after the photographer took this, that he killed him. Like, he just, it's so <laughs> cursed. Folks, um, it's so good. It's oh my god! god. I- <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Cody... So I asked Cody to put to put our faces <laughs> on this image. <laughs> it's all I wanted. Did I put that in our Twitter? show notes. Not yet. I put that in our show notes like a full two or three minutes ago. And I didn't realize you weren't looking at it. And so I was just I just thought you weren't reacting to it. I oh, was just no. waiting. No, I was no, looking at the like, article. Well, and right. so, so definitely <laughs> we'll post this photo on our Twitter because it's so much funnier when you see it with our faces on Catherine Hardwick and Case do. <laughs> Folks, <Yeah. laughs> this if if you ever saw us at a meetup, like if we were ever <laughs> this if you, is what it would be. This is exactly what it would be. Because yeah. it would definitely y'all would definitely be our pets. I would definitely yeah. be in the middle doing the mom of mommist poses. And then Cody would definitely be there. Well, you can't see it because it has the icon over it. But Case 2 is like looking off and <laughs> just like <laughs> not. Um, but yeah, it's very good. It's the best thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Yeah. Okay. Elizabeth Reeser, who played Esme in the Twilight Saga, talked about Twilight and the 10-year anniversary that's happening. First of all, this is from U.S. Magazine, and the photo that they used of her, she is in a very gorgeous outfit. She looks like a wax doll. Yes. Doesn't look very happy, but in a very gorgeous outfit. Yes. I... And that's all that matters. Yes. So, I think the important thing to happen and discuss about this is... She's talking about the fact that she's excited, she's happy that people are excited, and just, you know, everyone's been kind of buzzing about the fact that this is a 10-year anniversary and stuff. So keep all of that in mind as we find out more information about what's to come for that soon. Ooh. Yes. So we have our screen right corner, as usual. Without fail. Yeah, and... Week after week. I'm, at this point, like, screen rant. Hit us up. We're giving you these free clicks. Like, come on. We like it because you give us the content. Now, check us out because we give you the clicks. Like, this is a beneficial symbiotic okay. relationship. Let's kiss. For, but, like, for real. Um, Let's do, like, a business kiss. <laughs> yes. That's that's what they should really call collabos. Business kisses. Yes. Ugh, what I've been saying. So, this week's, uh, unfortunately, uses the crazy word um unfortunately but it says the title is called 20 crazy details behind the making of the first twilight movie let's see how many of these we already knew one of the ones that i think we talked about right so we knew our pets almost got fired i mean i knew that anyways yeah yeah I knew. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 some of these did we i think we did talk about the fact that number 18 that stephanie meyer had wanted henry cavill as edward Yes, I think which so. like <laughs> Could you imagine? No. And some of these are we'd already talked about. So one of the ones that's 12, I don't know that we've talked about in at least a while, but like Ben Barnes as Edward, I could Ooh. see that. Okay. But again, it's that that accent that I think would be wild. Um, yeah. 
So, 10 is personally just, like, a very clickbaity title. Just, like, Nikki Reed's hair fell out. And it's like, what? (laughs) What are you talking about? Like, sorry? (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot of them. And it's like, number six, the actors hated the weather. Yeah. (laughs) Shocker, truly, to nobody. Because it's the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. And it's like, number three, Taylor wore a wig. No shit, really. Is that true? And, like, number one, the craziest detail out of all of these screen rant, Stephanie makes a cameo. We didn't believe it, really. But if you look at number one, the photo that they chose for Stephanie Meyer is the scariest thing I've ever seen. I don't know that Stephanie it's Meyer... Haunting. It's haunting. <laughs> this, is, this is a tale today of terrifying photos, folks. Yeah. This cast, there are some people in here that don't take great photos, no. It's, it's yikes mcgikes, folks. But yeah, so if there are any of these details that, that shock you, let us know. But yeah. I think the, the most surprising thing about this saga is through looking at these photos, you can tell all of the coloring differences just from scrolling through them. Yes. Some other notable things as we run through this. The Forever Twilight and Forks Festival seems to be happening well, it will have happened by the time that you listen to this. So that's exciting. I won't wow. be there, but Rip. one day I will. <laughs> the last thing I want to talk about, because I sent this to Cody to put in our <laughs> podcast today, and it seemed kind of off the wall. Uh-huh. But I thought that we might get a kick out of it, because it's about curses. And, you know, this this show's kind of wild. Yeah. Um, but I thought... I thought we might enjoy it. So, Cody, do you want to do you want to say what I sent to you to put in the pod today? What is this thing? One in five Irish people believe a work colleague may have put a curse on them. Study reveals. <laughs> <laughs> and how how does that make you feel? <laughs> I don't. I like who like wh- why did the survey exist? What what happened? I have never felt so seen. I in my like whole you life. definitely wrote this article yep. simply on the fact of this lead because it's like one in five Irish people believe a work colleague may have put a curse on them, according to a new research. Curse in all caps. Yep, and I am that Irish person is the thing. <laughs> I I've yep, I never felt so seen. Um the fact that they use a hocus pocus photo here is a lot yeah cody is this the year that i'm gonna finally watch hocus pocus bitch you gotta okay is is this spooktober the year that i'm gonna finally do it i think so okay i don't know why you're depriving yourself all right all right all right fine (laughs) but yes so i feel very seen by this just because there's just a lot happening in this i was kind of perplexed when we got sent this article in our daily digest but the thing that I found kind of funny is in a, this poll kind of seemed all over the place. Um, sure. But the thing that I found kind of hilarious to me about it is they also polled these people about, I guess, their turn-ons and other cryptids. Because it says over half, so 52% of the people that were also polled about their coworkers and being cursed, said that they found a fictional <laughs> vampire like Edward Cullen, to be extremely attractive. And they said the reason why, so 46% of them said the biggest turn on was that vampires have centuries of wisdom and experience, um, but always look ageless. So take that and just live with it, I guess. So um, basically I wrote the study is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. So yeah, you just all have to live with that knowledge now and enjoy it. Yeah, that's just it. Yep. So enjoy that. The other thing, which I think I'll just leave you all with this information. Maybe we'll follow up with it next week. Is there is some holiday stuff already coming out. Just a preview of it. And it looks like there may be such thing as a sex toy advent calendar coming out this year. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in too. Hell yeah. So just know that. And we'll... We'll discuss that a little bit more next week. Yeah, and if you're a company who makes these... Uh, yeah. (laughs) Hit us up, all right? Yeah, please. That's all I'm saying. 
Yeah. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Would you like to talk about chapters 11 and 12 with me? Yeah. Great. Because we left off last week at the end of chapter 10 with a fantastic, sexy little situation that was going on. Yes. So. um, Cool. Sexy pool. Sexy pool. And not in the pool, billiards pool. No, billiards. (laughs) Billiards pool. The least sexy word. Yes. Yeah, billiards. Objectively. Billiards is not. Not a great word. There's not a lot going on there. <laughs> so, yes. They are continuing that sex scene. Um, they have not randomly fallen asleep during this. No. Uh, Believe it or not, E.L. James might know how to end a chapter. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm still on the fence about that, but the jury's still out. But We're right at least now. diversifying yeah. it a little bit. Yes. So this the sex scene goes on for quite a while, and surprisingly enough, it's not the worst thing she's written. Um, yeah, they seem to be having some fun, which is nice right. to see. They're yeah, they're they're flirting a lot. They're having some sexy times. They seem to be saying, you know, they're communicating, like, tell me to stop if this is too rough, things like that. Um, yeah. So, you know, they're not using the safe word, but they're just saying, Christian's just like, just tell me to stop. And it's like, okay, this works for the two of you right now. I guess that's fine. And it goes on for quite a while, but, like, it's not, it's not the worst thing that she's ever written. Yeah, it's fine. It's, yeah, I mean, it's fine. She, when Anna's, when they're done having sex, Anna's like, damn, I'm tired. It's like, look, all right. And then they take a bath and they fall asleep because that's how... Things work. Yeah. It'd be like that. Yeah. I'm already bored, apparently. <laughs> um, Christian is, of course, the kind of person whose alarm goes off and it goes straight to the news, like the news radio, which is the most boring yeah, thing. the fuck? I'm asleep. <laughs> He's a psychopath, is what I'm trying to get at. That's gross. So anyways, she stayed the night at Christian's place to like from Sunday night to Monday morning and apparently this is the first time that's happened um because it's they're both getting ready for work in the morning so it's very like domestic Anna gets up at the same time as Christian does and Christian gets ready to go take a shower and stuff and Anna falls back asleep which is a mood and he's like hey you want to go to work and she's like "Uh." (laughs) but then eventually she ends up getting ready because they both go out to the kitchen, and Mrs. Jones is there to make her, like, breakfast and her lunch, and she's like, oh, I don't know how to, <laughs> I don't know how to get used to this, but someone's making me, like, a packed brown bag lunch, and she gets, like, very excited about this, more excited than she's been about most things in this book so far. It's very cute. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. She's like, this is so cool. I could definitely get used to this. And she's saying, like, she never, her, she can't even remember her mom doing this and stuff. This is the, it's so funny because she's not usually in awe about things that Christian has. But this is the one thing that she's like, wow, okay, you have a person who can make me a brown bag lunch? Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is very relatable because I hate making myself a lunch for work. And yeah. if I could have someone do that, very good. She goes to work, and this is when this chapter gets very gross. So she goes to work, and as usual, Jack, her boss, is gross. And any time that there's emails between Christian and Anna in a chapter, things are are probably going to get a little bit nasty as well. Yeah, in a lot of ways. In a a lot of ways. Either it's going to be like, ugh, gross, or like, oh my god, (laughs) I need to like take my eyeballs out gross, which are sometimes the same thing. As we know from previous chapters, we found out that Christian has plans to take over Anna's company, um, but we find out that that has kind of been on the back burner at this point, so she needs to keep quiet about that. We find out as well throughout this day that Jack is making plans to go to a symposium in New York, and it's Anna's job to go with him, as well as to plan that trip out. Now, Even though she is with Christian, she is under no obligation to let him know that she is leaving or to, like, ask. 
because nope. she's an adult. Yep. But she has the courtesy, as you know, she's dating him, to just be like, hey, sure. um, just to give you a heads up, like, I'm going this place in. Which is, you know, that's a nice courtesy to do for someone. But then it's Christian. So, <sighs> he, like, several things happen at once where he's like, I want you to move in with me. Also, if you go on this trip, you're dead to me. And it's like, uh, hi. <laughs> uh, yeah. And even Anna says, like, remember what Dr. Flynn said? What happened to walking before we won? One? Sorry. Hi. What happened to walking before we won? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that, and I, which I think is a valid question to ask. Um, and also yeah. they're doing this over what is essentially just like a text, right? So like, don't fight over like this. Like, that's not, that's not appropriate. And they're still doing the thing where they change the titles of their emails, which will never stop bothering me. Um, but there's one that Anna does that I love where she's like, no shouty, no bold shouty capitals on a Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a mood. No one, don't ever, don't, not even on a Monday, but especially not ever. <laughs> don't, hey. Um, and, but Anna's saying like, I want to go to New York. I've never been before. And this seems like a really good opportunity for my job. So you don't get to say no in general, but especially not for this. No. And it's super gross. So a whole bunch of things happen at this time. And also, um, I think this is the time when Mrs. Robinson emails her too. And so there's yeah. like so there's many so emails. so much happening. Yeah, but <laughs> please shut your laptop down. Yeah. This woman is trying to work. This woman's trying to do her job. <laughs> yeah. There's, she cannot get anything done. And then Anna sends an email to Christian at not even 10 o'clock in the morning Yeah, where she goes off on him and she's like, you need to get a grip. I am not yeah. sleeping with Jack and like all this shit um, where she's it is like, I was so proud. There was so much growth. There was so much respect. There was so much like, Hey, I'm a human being. It was so good. You live my life. And Bitch. she's always mentioned, and I think Christian had observed this earlier on in the first book too, that she is able to more easily communicate her feelings through a text form. So she gets it all out on this email server that we know is a public, well, like, you know, a sort of public email server that like yeah. the work has. And so she sends this to him being like, I don't think you are going to sleep with, like, spank, fuck anyone else if people trust each other and all this stuff. Right? And she's like, yeah. so extend this courtesy to me. And she even signed it, like, Anna. And then her she has her, like, signature on it. So it says, like, Anastasia Seal, assistant to Jack or whatever. And then Christian fucking calls her and is like, you need to delete that email Show me a little bit of courtesy. This is a work email. I told you that they're being monitored. As if, like, deleting her email is going to do anything if it's being monitored. Christian. Anyways. But anyways. So they, they try to, like, start fighting with each other over the phone. But he's four years old, so he hangs up on her. It'd be like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. You, you know. Because he's a toddler. Yeah. He was like, what about walking before we won? But then... Me, 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 me. But also, I could have you fired, idiot. I yeah. swear to God. You play this shit. He is a boss, baby. You know what I mean? Uh, That's what I've been saying! <laughs> <laughs> He's the boss, baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> Why? <laughs> it just kills me sometimes. You know what I mean? Um, I know what you mean. Anyways, so then all of a sudden we hear Jack, like, scream down the hall. He's like... Um, <laughs> and he's telling her not to like book any of the flights and stuff for uh, to New York, and she looks at him and is like, "I already did it." And he's like, "Oh, man, beans, <laughs> oh balls." <laughs> uh, 
shit. Ah, nuts. Um, let's <laughs> no, just do this. And butthead. <laughs> this is the podcast. He <laughs> just throws his laptop out the window, jumps out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's just gone forever. Yeah. <laughs> well, guess I'll just leave. <laughs> Um, my people need me i gotta be somewhere else it's like that vine where the guy is playing mini golf and he fucks up his shot and so he jumps into the lake have you ever seen that one no what that's like my favorite vine (laughs) that's your favorite vine (laughs) yeah you talk to me all the time about vine and you've never mentioned that one ever it's just such a mood this guy they're like playing mini golf at night (laughs) and this guy he like tries to hit a shot in this mini golf course and he, like, totally misses it. And he just, like, drops his – I almost said fucking puck. I know I know a sport. He <laughs> drops his golf club and just, like, yeah. has his hands on his side and just, like, runs over this fence and just jumps into this dark lake, like, in this mini golf course. <laughs> it's the biggest – Is that you? Yes. It's just such a mood. Um, yeah. It's just a mood. That one or what the fuck, Richard, are, like, two of my favorite yeah. lines. Anyways, so the the rest of this chapter goes on. We find out that Christian interfered with the New York stuff. And it's like, all of a sudden now, all of these, like, work trips have to be approved by upper management. And so Anna sends emails. And, and who's like, upper management? <laughs> God, yeah, yeah. Cody. <laughs> they have the to, Lord. They have to talk to an oracle. <laughs> Can you imagine 2014? They have this, just this fucking like white bride in a tower. Can you imagine if that was part of your fucking company policy? Hi, uh, so I'm trying to get a job with like, T-Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> in order to follow our company policy, we have an oracle in our top tower. We're trying to like make sure the budget's good for this month and everything uh so we want to see if these expenses check out we do plan on have it flying two people out next week is that <laughs> chill with you what <laughs> in order to double check that i just need to double check with our oracle she will need to <laughs> smoke a bowl of opium and then speak with the lord <laughs> Can you imagine? Hi, I'm Amazon's Oracle. Yeah. I confirm the budgets. My name is Alexa. Okay, but Alexa is absolutely an Oracle. For real. Like, yeah. There is someone that Jeff Bezos has hired that is an actual Oracle that, like, answers all of these questions. She's yeah. in the cloud. She smokes opium. And is <laughs> somehow connected to gods. Yeah. Tell me I'm wrong. Someone tell I me won't. I'm wrong. <laughs> Fight me. Okay. Anyways. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in a lot of things. <laughs> and one of them now includes that oracles still exist. Um, okay. Anyways. So we need to talk about the fact that Christian Grey is a victim blamer. Yep. yep. One of them. So. Anna's like, I don't need protecting from my own boss. The cops are coming because Christian's an asshole. I don't know if you guys can hear the sirens, but the cops are coming. Um, <laughs> so Anna's like, I don't need protecting from my own boss. He might make a pass at me, but I would say no. Um, yeah. She's like, you can't. Look at this growth. Yeah, Look for real. She's like, you can't interfere. It's wrong and controlling on so many levels. Good job, Anna. That's concise growth. and clear. Growth. There's no way yes. to misconstrue that. It is quite the most direct she could have possibly been. Exactly. So, Christian goes on this long paragraph where he says things like, I have seen how, quote, effective you are at fighting off unwanted attention. I remember that's how I had the pleasure of spending my first night with you. At least the photographer has feelings for you. The sleazeball, on the other hand, does not. He is a serial philanderer and he will try to seduce you. And then it goes, it goes on for this. But like, fuck off, Christian. This is not... fuck off. (sighs) I cannot. And he even says, like, if you want to go to New York, I'll take you. We can go this weekend. I have an apartment there. And... (sighs) That's not the point. It's not. She's not like, oh, I just want to, like, go to New York. And this is the only way I can go to New York. This bitch knows you have all the money that exists. If she wanted to just fuck around in New York, she would have asked you. 
But she, no, she wants to go for her career and job opportunities. If she wanted to fuck on the Empire State Building, not fuck in the Empire State Building, Christian. If she wanted to fuck on the Empire State Building, she yeah. would, Christian. She wants to go for work because she is a business woman. Yeah. And you're not giving her that opportunity. That's not. gross and controlling. And now you're victim blaming her for things that are not her fault. Gross. Yeah. Gross. So this goes on um, for quite a while. Um, and Jack is like pissed because he is, he finds out that he can go on this trip, but he c- cannot take Anna with her. And there's nothing that he can do about it. Um, he asks her to, Jack asks Anna to go get her lunch. We had found out earlier from Christian that Anna should not leave the premises to get lunch for her safety because of Lila, Layla, Layla. Um, and, but she goes anyways, because she don't give a fuck. Yeah, she's pissed. She wants to get her boss some damn lunch. Whatever. Exactly. It's part of her job, and she's okay with that. She leaves anyways, um, and she doesn't see any signs of Layla, but she doesn't, she still kind of feels weird. She ends up leaving, and Christian calls and is like, you shouldn't have left, your Sawyer saw you, all this kind of stuff, and she tells Christian that he's being suffocating, which he is, and they are going to talk about this tonight. Christian's all like... I can't believe you just told me I'm being suffocating. Me, 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 me. Anyways, they, the end of the night comes. Anna doesn't realize that she's been working until like 730. And her and Jack are the only people in the office. This kind of gross situation happens in the office with only the two of them there. Where they're looking over this manuscript. And Jack is giving her suggestions. And he's like totally invading her personal space. Yep. Anna is able to kind of, like, advocate for her boundaries and stuff, um, but she feels very uncomfortable and kind of lets him know that through her body language, but he does not pick up those symbols or signals, sorry. They discuss her weekend and her boyfriend and stuff, and Jack doesn't really get and, like, pick up any of those hints until she name drops who her boyfriend is. Yeah. Of course. And even then. Even then. At what cost? <laughs> yep. Um, it isn't until she leaves and gets in the car that she starts to feel better about, like, that he's gone. Um, and that's because Christian is there in the car. So they start to talk, but not really. It isn't really anything of importance until after they fuck in the elevator, as they always do. And that was, you know, them getting their tension out because they fought. Um, Uh, And now it's all better. Yeah. Um, They had to have their makeup sex. The one thing that this reminded me of, because they've had sex in the elevator multiple times at this point. Did you watch any of the um, Christmas movies on Netflix that came out last year? No, I did not. Wow. Okay. Can't really. I know that a, a Christmas a Christmas Prince happened, but I don't know anything else. So there were a lot of holiday movies that came out on Netflix last this this past season, um, uh-huh. and quite a few of them centered around the fact that elevators would break down and couples would kiss <laughs> in them, and I can only yeah. imagine that that became a trope because of Fifty Shades of Grey. And that's all. Yeah, I, they do it a lot. So like, I get it. And I can't. I can't imagine that it it started because of Fifty Shades of Grey, but I think that this definitely continued that trope and made it more popular. Yeah. And that's all I have to say. Like, it, I, the elevator is the least sexy place. I don't think about, it. I don't want anyone to even get near me in an elevator. No, I, my, my, I'm happiest when I am alone in an elevator. I don't even want myself in an elevator. Like, yeah, I, I yeah, I honestly, ideally, I wouldn't be in an elevator. But, but if I were, I don't want anyone near me, especially close. No, the best elevator Nuh-uh. is an empty elevator. Yeah. So no, don't, no, nope. don't, don't. Hey, stop! Don't even think about I, an elevator right now. Stop thinking about them. Hey, hey, I know you're all just thinking about kissing us in an elevator. Stop it. Don't 
touch don't, don't even imagine Asian kiss me nope. in an elevator right nope. now. Mm-mm. Get your tongue out of my mouth right now. <laughs> in this elevator. I haven't had a mint today. You know what my mouth yeah. tastes like? What that mouth do? <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. What? I What? If I'm being <laughs> honest right now, Cody? Yeah. I had for dinner. What did you have for dinner? Uh I I have not eaten a lot of food today, so I wouldn't say I technically had dinner. <laughs> yeah. Why? Hey, take care of yourself. I, I'm trying. <laughs> trying my best. That's coming from someone that also does not take care of themselves, so. Yeah, listen, everyone's horrible. Today was the first day in two weeks of my teaching, my first year of teaching officially, that I've had lunch. Wow, congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm actually genuinely very proud of that. Yeah. Um... What that mouth do, thank you for asking. Um, I had a French dip for dinner tonight, and I had a pickle on the side. Wow. Because I am a trash person. Yeah, listen. And I love strong flavors. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So what that mouth do, a lot. Is what I'm trying yeah, to say. Too much. It's too, too much. much. Um, Get you don't want to be anywhere near there. Yeah, don't come near me ever. Anyways, okay, so they're having a talk. They're talking. Hey, did you know books? They talk sometimes. Um, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, so the chapter the long. It's a very long chapter. The chapter finally ends with Christian being like. Let's move in together. And Anna's being like, yeah, but stop smuggling me. Stop suffocating me. But also stop smuggling me. Yeah, uh, please. And he's like, great, I love you. Let's do this. And they're like, great, great, great. Taylor walks in and is like, hey, lovely conversation you're having here. I know that you two are literally fucking on this table. Um, <laughs> but Mrs. Robinson is coming in. And that's where this chapter uh <sighs> ends so good talk great things happening it's horrible all of, it. All of it it's very bad um so chapter 12 there's this really long conversation that happens between mrs robinson and christian mm-hmm. anna tries to stay in the room for part of it but she eventually feels really awkward so she's like i'm tired i'm gonna <laughs> leave but then just moves quickly around the wall and just listens yeah. to the whole thing <laughs> Christian's like, it's 4 p.m. What are you talking about? Yeah. You woke up an hour ago. (laughs) That's not true. If I woke up an hour ago, that's the best time for me to go back to bed. So, like, that's a good enough time for me to have eaten and to get tired again. So I would definitely (laughs) fall back asleep. So, but yeah, so she goes to sleep, aka just peeks around a post in the room and just keeps listening to this conversation and it's nothing that we hardly haven't heard or suspected i think about elena where she's like i sort of have feelings for you and also i'm being blackmailed it's yeah, like wink, wink. and it's like but we don't find out any information about that it's just this weird dynamic between the two of them of her being like, does she, does Anna know about how negative you are about yourself, about all your issues? And Christian's like, she knows me better than anyone. And then Elena's like, okay, well, bye. Ah, uh, I just realized uh, all of my doors were open. I need to go back home. <laughs> um, my mom says I need to go home now. <laughs> I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> it was just the weirdest plot Mom, Can you point. pick me up? <laughs> like, it's also so inconsequential. Like, it gets resolved in, like, three seconds. It's just like, whoops, Christian. I'm not here for you, Anna. I know you don't like me, and I respect that, or whatever. But Christian, ugh, oh, you won't believe it. I'm being blackmailed, and someone wants $5,000. And he's like, uh, okay. And then, like, two sec, two pages later, it's like, oh, that was just, like, a goof. Everything's fine. Thanks, Christian. It's like, fucking, what was the point of any of this? 
Christian, you won't believe this letter that I saw. I don't now, Christian, you might see you might initially see this and be nervous, but trust me, it looks like crayon, but it's actually written in blood. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> I swear. And I know, Christian, it looks like it says five dollars, but it really means five million. <laughs> Christian, I promise <laughs> you. Christian, I have no money. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm being hunted, targeted. <laughs> they want my whole soul. The also, oracle is demanding. You. <laughs> the oracle is demanding I have your children, <laughs> Christian. <laughs> I have no control anymore. And then Christian's like, yeah, uh... So, back to being business partners, right? I don't really like being your friend. <laughs> it's, all I can imagine is that, like, she, she's saying all this stuff, and then it's in this, like, deep, like, Professor Trelawney voice, and then all of a sudden sure. she gets, like, shook out of it, and she's like, so anyway, um, see you tomorrow for our meeting? <laughs> yeah, so we'll go over taxes, and, and the, the business budget. stuff, yeah. And the business, we gotta don't don't forget. I gotta order more post its. Don't let me forget. Don't forget to stop See. sealing my paper clips. Yep. Also, I hate your girlfriend. <laughs> I'm in love with you. I mean, uh, you're great. <laughs> business i mean you're a bitch i mean see you tomorrow i'll see you in quarter three fuck uh, <laughs> oh my god yeah it's just the weirdest thing that I, and it, it's so it meant nothing also she's his like his only friend and also Eli that. James is really trying to sell us on that and i'm like i don't i don't get it christian's real friend is the plant that he talks to in his yes, office. and the piano in which he loves to and the, sex on and with. <laughs> and with. Also, the, yeah, the piano that he jizzes into sometimes. Like, it's not a big deal. <laughs> what a horrible image. <laughs> Isn't that how you take care of pianos? <laughs> That's how you show your love to pianos. <laughs> you, so they know they're valued. <laughs> you, but you, like, take care of the keys and stuff, right? Right? Yeah, sure. You, mm -hmm. you love them? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yep. Alright, I'm gonna pretend like I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> uh, okay. So anyways, this was the worst conversation that I had to read. Um, and then, so, Anna's like, so let's talk about this. And Christian's like, I've had the longest day. <laughs> let's pretend yeah. like we've never talked about this before. And then suddenly he looks at her and is like, oh, yeah, I forgot to give you your car. It came early. Because <laughs> I right. don't know how to transition conversation topics ever. And also, uh, you got a car and a couple days ago, but it's there. I slipped my mind. Whoops. Because I am Bob Barkley and this is the yeah. price is right. Sorry, did you just say Bob Barkley? No. Did you say Bob Barkley? Bitch, I have the audio. I can, <laughs> I can ruin you. I can Leave run it back. Alone. I can I can amplify it. I can, <laughs> I, I can just keep repeating it. No, no Cody, <laughs> don't. Leave me alone. No. I could ruin you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Did I say Bob Barkley instead of Bart Barker? Maybe I did. Maybe I did. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Run back the tape. <laughs> no, Cody, don't. Because <laughs> I am Bob Barkley. Bob Barkley. Bob Barkley. I, listen, I've said a lot of regrettable things today, okay? Just leave me alone. I guess. It's fine. Anyway, Bob Barkley. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe in this universe, it's not Bob Barker. Maybe it is Bob Barkley. His cousin, where they give out just sobs <laughs> instead of RVs, Okay. Their cousin where they have the same first name and a little bit different <laughs> of a last name. <laughs> you know how cousins work. <laughs> you know, it's all in the family. <laughs> Everyone in my family's named Bob. <laughs> we have different last names. <laughs> yeah. You know how families yeah. work. Yeah. We decided to switch it up a little bit. 
You've been to Thanksgiving before. Everyone's just <laughs> named Bob. We made it unnecessarily <laughs> confusing. Absolutely. Oh. It's a nightmare to be alive. <laughs> All of our Christmas presents look the same. It's very <laughs> confusing. Oh, my God. Okay. Anna falls asleep. Anna wakes up. Anna goes outside to the living room to see Christian fucking his piano. Yep. It's really embarrassing for all <laughs> parties involved. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is truly a crime. It sh- <laughs> she should have called the police. She looks over at Taylor. Taylor documents it again. It's it's a lot for everybody involved. They probably have sex again. Yeah, probably. Um, who's, who's you know, who knows? They go to work again because, you know, that's how you do. Yeah. Jobs happen. Jobs happen. Jobs happen. But this, so chapter 12 ends in kind of a weird way. So we find out that in theory, Kate and fucking Elliot should be coming back from Barbados alive. (laughs) Fucking finally. (laughs) Yeah. They didn't get skinned first. Yeah. They should be coming back alive and not in caskets at this point. Um, But. Yeah. First, her so Kate's brother Ethan is coming back first, and we don't really find out why. We just know that he's coming in. But then this chapter gets a little bit confusing at the end. So we know that Anna is greeting him when he comes in, and so the plan is to meet him at the end of her work day, and we know that Sawyer will be there too. Um, throughout the work day, Anna and Christian email a lot about sex stuff as they usually do. Yeah. Um, at the end of the workday, Sawyer is there, and we expect that Ethan will be at her apartment when she gets there. I think that was the plan as well. Sure, yeah. Anyway, the point is, is that they plan to go to her apartment, and it's been, like, a weekend. Yeah. Right. So they end up going to the apartment at the end of this chapter. And they head up. It's been a while. And the chapter ends with... Yep. And we need the music, too, because when she opens up the door, she realizes that there's a person standing at the kitchen island, but the person is a woman. It's Layla, and she's holding a revolver. And she's looking at... (laughs) She's looking at Anna. (laughs) Yep. What fucking Shyamalan twist? Hell yeah. I hope someone gets murdered in the next chapter. (laughs) But who is, like, was it, did Kate and Elliot die? Like, who died? Has anyone died yet? I have questions. Well, we're gonna fucking find out next week. Yep. On into the twilight. Yeah, who knew that there'd be actual suspense, as if people haven't already read these books and movies haven't come out yet. I'm, I am just on the edge of my seat. Yep. I mean, agreed. I'm I'm actually genuinely curious to find out, so Yeah. Um The guns are here. The, for real. For real. Like we've we finally found the guns. For real. I I mm, I just I feel like the guns are like persistent throughout the series though, and I'm wondering like I feel like this Layla thing has gotta end at some point in this book. Or like be concluded mm-hmm. in some way or dealt with. Um so I don't know how it will transgress into the rest of the series. Agreed. Where are all the guns? There were because there were a lot in that trailer, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly, which I haven't rewatched probably since the first time I've seen it. But a lot of guns. There were a lot of guns. Yes. Where they come from? Where they go? Nope. Mm-mm. Cody, please. <laughs> Cody, just let me do Cotton Eye Joe. I can't legally let you do that. <laughs> All right, well... Or morally. Oh, okay, well. Um, I <laughs> I think it's time to thank our patrons this week. Yeah. Um, I think... Should we do them as people from the embarrassing photo? Uh, sure. Okay. I think we should do that then. So, cool. I would love to give a shout-out to Shannon Clearwater. Yeah. Shannon... I think you should be me today. So I'm going to give you, in our embarrassing photo of our pats, Catherine, and Casey, you're going to be me. You're going to be Catherine in the middle with your jazz hands, living it up. Yeah. Yeah. Living her truth. 
Shout out to Katie Weber. Who is going to be just like the really tense but also limp fist of Robert Pattinson. Oh my god. <laughs> That's very good. The duality is very strong. And shout out to Simon Steele. Boo-boo-boo. Our $25 sponsor. Ow! Um, yeah. And you're going to be... You're going to be the fantastic aspect that I would not shut up to Cody about. And you're going to be Case Do's hips. They are on. They are the most. Like, my eyes are transfixed. I can't look away. I am stuck in a vortex. Please help. Agreed. Cody, I was thinking today yeah. that we would give a shout out to a random $1 patron. Okay. So, today I was thinking about shouting out Alexis. Okay. Who, Cody, has been a $1 patron of ours for eight months damn what the fuck alexis i don't even know what i did 18 months ago that's so much time i don't know if i've been alive for 18 months i don't think so either (laughs) um and alexis you're from this photo you are gonna be i think you're gonna be our pats's inward twisted left foot (laughs) The one that's just ready. The highest honor. The, the one that's just ready to, to curl in on itself at any moment. <laughs> it's just yeah. ready to go. He looks like he could, like his ankle could just give out at any moment. <laughs> he could just fall to the ground. It's just ready to die. And become a pile of dust. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. I had to find my own fan fiction this week. Oh, wow. So, Y'all are slacking. And and I think you realized after last week what kind of punishment it is when I have to find uh, my uh, own uh, fan fiction at the end of this week. So this week I found something for us. Um, it's written by the A, B, C, E, D, F, Geek. And it... That was so I much. agreed. Um, and it... <laughs> And it, Sorry if you're dyslexic. Oh, for was... real. Um, and it was published on April 3rd of 2015. And it's titled Fifty Shades of Grey Review. The subject is a review of the movie Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh my god. <laughs> and it's Cody. <laughs> it's good. Our Christian faith tells us that sex within marriage is something precious, beautiful, and holy. Tonight I succumbed to peer pressure, exactly what I caution you never to do, and went with a bunch of girlfriends to see Fifty Shades of Grey. I ignored the little voice in my head that implored me to just say no, because after all, it's just a silly movie, right? Well, I wish I had been given that voice credit, because it was right. I have to accept the hard fact that your eyes and minds are going to see this drivel sooner or later. I am writing this so that when that time comes, you'll recognize Fifty Shades of Grey for what it is, rather than what it pretends to be. Let me begin by telling you what it's not. It's not a love story. It does a pretty convincing job of masquerading as one, for sure, but please believe me when I say that love doesn't even have a cameo role in this plot. (laughs) Neither (laughs) is it a romantic fairy tale with a harmless bit of naughtiness sprinkled on top. Romance is glaringly absent, in fact. As for harmless S&M, please understand that the message in this film is the polar opposite of harmless, where a rich, handsome, experienced man uses his power to seduce and manipulate a young, innocent student into doing a lot of things she is extremely uncomfortable doing. They are not equals. They are not partners. There is, in fact, no they to speak of at all. So I'm going to skip to the end here. Um, (laughs) Please know this. Love is gentle. Love never takes. Love does not demand. Love waits for consent. Love doesn't need helicopter rides and expensive gifts. Love is enough. Listen to me on this, if nothing else. And if you choose not to listen to me, then listen to that little voice in your head. It's common sense telling you that this film's a disgrace, so listen to it. Because I wish I'd listened to mine, and there's like 16 ellipses. End scene. Damn. Wow. 
Yeah. I feel like we are not really honing in on a, a definition of fan fiction. I feel like we're really just, like, going for whatever we find on the website. So this was posted on fanfiction.net. But hey, it was a hoot. Yeah, I agree. You know, as I would recommend, send me your fucking fanfictions. <laughs> Please, God, we're dying. You know? Um, but as we say in Seattle... Nibbit. Nibbit. This is an Earbud Media production. You can find us on Twitter at Earbud Media and listen to the rest of our shows. You can find this show on Twitter at Into the Twilight, as well as Into the Twilight Show. You can send us an email at Into the Twilight Show at gmail.com. You can also become a sponsor of the show or buy some merch at Into the Twilight Our art is done by Maddie Padilla, who you can find at Your Ghost Toast 44 on Instagram, and our music is done by Eli Krauss. You can find at Eli Sour Krauss and KraussFilms.com. The intro and outro is by KB Smith. You can find it kb underscore underscore smith on twitter you can find ally on twitter at into wild places and you can find me at dyke discourse you've been listening to earbud media production earbud media audio for everyone